Hello guys, welcome back to the Kids World YouTube channel. Have you heard of a paycheck? No, 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 I'm not talking about the ones you get every month for working somewhere at a company. Who cares? I'm talking about the movie, the 2003 film starring Ben Affleck and Uma Thurman. And it's based on the 1953 novel by Philip K. Dick. Ever heard of it? No? Okay, let me tell you this story. The story is about Michael Jennings, who is starred by Ben Affleck, and he is a brilliant software engineer who makes technology existing currently into something more advanced that can shock the world. But at this presentation, he gets really impressed by this three-dimensional technology that the new the world has come up with. and. He thinks that he can make it even more advanced because Ark has requested him to secretly do it since it was banned by the federal government. So for two months, he stayed in a lab working on this new technology that he could advance and create into something new without the federal government knowing about. And after his presentation, Ark was very impressed. They said, you've been doing what we've been trying to do for three years and you did it in two months. And it was very impressive to them and they were shocked. But unfortunately, they had to erase his memories because if he accidentally exposed to someone, that person would expose it to someone else who would expose it to the other and then expose it to them. But that would be risky. So after he was done with the job, they erased his memories for the two months he worked at ARC and they give him a paycheck of $526,000. Now I wish I was making that kind of money. For, well, I'm just a kid, so I still have time to figure out my career, but who cares? And after that, he goes back home and gets a letter from his childhood friend, Jimmy, who is the owner of Alcom and the CEO. He offers him a job and invites him to his house party. At the house party, Michael easily develops a crush on this biologist who works at Alcom. And her name is Rachel Porter. She's a PhD in biology. And when he offers to talk somewhere else, she turns down the offer and says, we'll meet sometime else. And that's when Shorty, the guy who erased his memories, who helped him with exercising to enhance his mobility and become conscious because after his memories erased, he got unconscious and started feeling drowsy. So, <laughs> what happened? Thank you, thank you. And so he leaves Shorty alone at the party and he's like, oh, why? And I have to be honest, he is kind of short. So Shorty suits his name, Shorty. I wonder what his last name is. Anyway, and so they have some cigars and Jimmy offers him a job, which Michael hesitates for a moment. But when he goes home and finds out that the paycheck is $92 million in revenue, he accepts the offer. And so the next day he goes to the office. He had to get rid of all his, his personal belongings. And after three years, he would get it back, including his favorite sunglasses. Who would want to lose their favorite sunglasses? No, these are not my favorite sunglasses. Don't, don't worry. They're, they're kind of goofy. But anyway. Yeah, so when he got inside, he meets Dr. Porter again, but he, before he had to get an injection to go three years into the future and forgetting his memories so that nothing suspicious would happen. Because who wants to get caught by the government, then go to jail for a lifetime and then caught by the FBI and then they would be arrested at a young age for illegal stuff I don't know what it's called I'm just a kid anyway that's what happened and 
he goes three years into the future and after three years passed michael was genuinely confused what happened jimmy says you're done with the job and little did mike know that he was being used for this whole mess he turned down 92 million dollars and traded it for 19 or sorry 20 items a stamp a pen a quarter hairspray sunglasses um and oh yeah a reservation at cafe michelle and then the bmw key the marbles the oh yeah the stamp and then the just give me a moment and oh yeah the pin and then the lighter who needs a lighter and then the diamond ring the crossword puzzle the quarter and then the what else oh yeah of course he also how could we forget the bmw car um key and then he also got the lottery ticket and yeah the lottery ticket was kind of a shock and then he what else did he get mm. Hairspray, yes, he got the hairspray, and I think that was it, right? Oh yeah, the sun, the glasses, oh, the cigarettes, how could I forget about the cigarettes? Yes, he got caught by the FBI after three years, and the cigarettes helped him escape because, uh, you know, the, the fire alarm, and then the glasses, he could see in the spot, so he took a visit, um, ran away thankfully he had a bus ticket yes i forgot about the bus ticket i'm so sorry guys and the bus ticket also saved him because again the bus ticket he had to get away from the fbi agents and you know what being caught by the fbi means grave danger and it's impossible to escape an fbi office because there's so much security there and even john wolf was shocked about it if you didn't know who was john wolf it was jimmy's assistant guy and jimmy was shocked that he was able to get out the fbi agent said that you had signed too many statements that are illegal and decker died he fell out of his apartment window he fell he jumped, woohoo, let me kill myself, I'll do suicide, I'm really stupid. Yeah, guys, never jump out of your um, window, it's, it's not cool, guys. All the way up there, he fell out of his bedroom window. But anyway, then Michael got into a motel, but on the bus, I forgot to mention, a street kid was stupid enough to steal his diamond ring because he can get money out of it. That's when he went back to the office where he got all of his 19 items. Sorry, 20 items. And he got to know that he sent it to himself, but he was confused. How do I not remember? Then he remembered, oh yeah, of course. They erased my memories, those fools. So they met at the station where he got to the motel. And he took all of his stuff and talked to his friend Shorty. And that's when the lottery show went on. He had realized he won the lottery. $90 million worth of lottery. There was also a key in the items thing. Now that I think about it. Because you need a key to escape sometimes. Keys can be very helpful. And there were killers everywhere from Alcom trying to kill, um, you know, Mike. And Shorty was given the key and he turned down all the electricity and Mike had a fight. He escaped, then he ran into John Wolf, who tried to kill him, but then he used the hairspray and then the lighter, which caused a great kablooey. And yeah, it was pretty 
cool. So then he escapes. And he had to stop a train with a pin. Do you guys ever realize how useful a pin could be? Just one pin can save you your life. Plus, pins may be small, but they're, they come in pretty handy usage. And then he goes back to the motel and he finds out he has a reservation at Cafe Michel for two. That's when Rachel comes back in. Hello, Rachel. And John Wolf finds out that she has to meet him at Cafe Michel at 1 p.m. And the fake Rachel comes and she tried to convince Mike that she needs the Alcom pass from his envelope and says that we'll end up together, so don't worry. And then she leans him and gives him a kiss. Blech, a barf. But then he realized there were fake eye lenses in her eyes. And asked, he asked, what's my favorite baseball? What is my favorite baseball team? She wasn't able to answer because she's not even the real Rachel. And how could a fake Rachel be able to answer that if she knows nothing about him? So that's when the real Rachel knocks him, her out. And she answers, the White Sox. Am I correct? That's when they escape. And they get a BMW. The motorcycle comes in handy. They escape. But then on the way, Rachel loses the envelope and a lot of violence happens. The FBI tries to help them because then they realize that he was telling the truth that they got rid of his memories. But then it was also crazy that they were being chased by goons. There were so many limos chasing them and they kept um, getting into traffic issues. But then they were able to escape and then got to a hotel and Rachel had tried to bring back his memories, but he didn't remember. But then he was getting a few flashes, flashbacks. He was starting to remember some things, like how they got birds. But then there was a school. They decided to go in it. And he realized that the, st the s Albert Einstein stamp was pretty, was on there. And that made Mike rem Remember that Shorty set up the station shopping center that Albert Einstein had already proved that they can't go to the future or can't travel back in time. And Ben Affleck said the company would spend $500 billion just to see the future. So then they go and use the microscope to see what it says. And you'll never guess what the Albert Einstein stamp says. It says that the whole world will end. If they don't destroy that future seeking machine that Ben Affleck created. And it wouldn't be safe. They'd have to go through a lot of stuff. First of all, how are they going to get into Alcom? First of all, they had a ticket and that thing access. They also had the marble things where they could trick the people into thinking that so that they'd get distracted and stop staring at them. So they got into the access key area and they went in and voila, there was the machine he had created. And a few um, days before, they had um, found out that there was a virus in the machine and that virus was hard to detect and nobody was able to find the virus. It was error 41, yes, error 41, which meant the hardware inside the machine, it was working fine, but he had tricked them and set them up on purpose because in case somebody had turned up and tried to use the machine without permission, Ben Affleck, I'm, I'm sorry, Mike Jennings had to find some way to make sure they don't get away with it because they spent $500 billion in total just to see the future. And Jimmy was like, we need to find Michael right now. But then Mike saw the future. The future was very bad. He would die. And that watch of his 
would have to save him. At least he didn't know that for now, but um, uh, who expects a watch, a watch, a watch to save them? I mean, okay, watch. Tell me when to go. Okay, um, can you save me, please? No, watches cannot talk. That's weird. How do they know for exact when to? But then they come into a fight with Jimmy. It's time to use those karate skills. <laughs> and so they're able to get out of there. But um, Rachel had to be left. And Mike said, you have to go. This is a fight with me and Jimmy. And they fight and fight. And then he is hung up on the chain, strapped really tightly his neck. Because you all, you all know should Y'all should know that if your necks get strapped really tightly here, you could die. But he was able to manage to escape it. And then he got on the top floor where he was the scene that he would die. Rachel was captured and they had to be safe. The watch said, three, two, one, move. Sorry. And they were heroic enough and Jimmy was killed. And John Wolf tried to seek the future but then the whole lab got on lockdown. Fire, boom, everywhere. The FBI agents tried to find out where. And one of the FBI agents, the guy who was trying to use the cigarettes, you know, he had lied saying Mike was gone. And that was basically the point. Then that's when Shorty had started a nursery. They started working there. And that's when Shorty saved the birds in the place Rachel was living at. So, under the cage, $90 million, the lottery. Mike said that we'll split it. 30%, 33%, a third, a third each of us. And Shorty was happy to hear that and said, you made the right decision, Mike. Keep doing the right thing. The moral of this story is that life is about new things and memories are highlights. You should never get rid of highlights. Life is about getting to know new stuff, creating new technology. Seeing the future might never not ever happen, but it's still something new that anyone can get the idea of what it's like to see the future. And as I said, Albert Einstein already proved that we might not ever be able to go back in time or go into the future. But it is possible that a miracle could happen. And it could happen. He never said it couldn't, but he still said it's highly unlikely not to. And that recaps this amazing science fiction story that I really hope you guys liked. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on post notifications for more updates, and I'll see you guys in the next video.